Welcome back to Horticulture Geek. Let's plant some seeds today. What's up guys, welcome back, I'm Ray. Thanks so much for joining me today. And as promised in an earlier video today, I'm finally ready to kind of unbox the Grower Grow Ease Seed Starting Kit from Gardener Supply. Um, and we're gonna actually plant some seeds up today and get some things going for the garden. So I'm super excited about that. Um, if you have never seen this seed starting kit, um, a lot of other YouTubers use it. One of my favorite YouTubers, Laura, over at Garden Answer uses these. She swears by them. Um, and I'm super excited to give these a try um, because these have some unique features about them that I think you're gonna love if you're gonna do seed starting. So I've already got one opened here so that we can kind of go through it. So what we have is several pieces. So we have a stand that holds our seed cells, our seed starting cells. And now these are really good, thick plastic. They're durable, they're reusable year after year. These are really good quality. So you're gonna use these for a long time. That's really nice. We have a capillary or water wicking mat because this is a self watering system. We have our tray, which is a solid tray. There's no drainage holes in this to catch and hold water so that it can be self-watering. And then we have our humidity and moisture dome. So you get all of that in the kit. So now this is really easy to put together. So once we have our tray here, we're going to put our stand in the tray. And what that does for us is that creates a water reservoir. So you can see the stand legs there. So those set down here and they set, and the tray is made with little grooves. So the feet of the stand set into the grooves in the tray to hold the system together so it won't be sliding and shaking on you. So it's in there. And that creates a water reservoir. Next we take our uh, capillary or water wicking mat and we're just gonna fold over one side like this and it tucks down the side of the tray and then the rest of the, the mat lays across the top. So what that's gonna do for us is that side that we folded and dipped down in there is actually going to be in the water reservoir and it's going to pull that water up and wick it across this mat um, very much like a oil lamp wick, um, wicks oil up so that it can burn. Same thing here. Um, so it's just gonna wick the water up and pull it across this, this mat. And now here's our seed starting cells. And you can see that there are holes. And so the holes will allow that moisture to then pull up into the soil. So all we have to do at this point is fill our soil cells with this with our soil and put our seeds in here <clears throat> and then at the very end obviously we have a humidity dome that sets right on top all right so let's run through what i'm going to plant today because i'm super excited about this um, so this takes a lot of the guesswork out of growing seeds. If you have ever tried growing seeds before and you've killed them with kindness, I know I've done that, you really just overwater them, this will help take care of some of that issue. So today I am going to be doing um, five seeds to start with and I have them lined up here and I've already got my seed tags written out. Um, and I am using wooden seed tags for this section. Um, now, if you were gonna be putting something out in the garden, a wooden seed tag is not gonna last very long, but for seed starting, it's perfectly fine. So, and the reason I like these for seed starting is because of their size. Um, so they're the perfect size to go into our seed cells and the humidity dome will still close without me having to trim and waste a bunch of plastic tags. So just know that if you choose to do this method, you can, 
Um, I, these were relatively inexpensive, so they're gonna work really well for seed starting. And then I know once I get ready to put stuff out in the garden, I'll do a more permanent plant tag at that point. But for today, I'm going to be uh, planting Hidu Tiny Bok Choy. I think that's how you pronounce it. So those are fun little miniature bok choys. Next up, I have Purple Lady Bok Choy. So we're gonna try some of that out. Next, I'm gonna be starting some sugar and peas to get those ready to go out. And I also have some Oregon sugar pod peas. We'll get those. And then lastly, uh, our first flower that I'm gonna start is a sweet pea. Um, and this is called Queen Alexandra. Now, sweet peas are poisonous. These are not food, they're not edible. So if you're a beginner gardener, make sure you understand that peas and sweet peas are very different. These are poisonous, we don't eat these. All right, so now um, I'm ready to get started. So we are going to push all this aside. And I did go ahead and pick up a bag of the Gardener's uh, Supply Seed Starting Mix. Just to give it a shot, you can buy seed starting mix at any garden center or big box store. Um, you don't have to order from a company. I just ordered a bag to try it out. But you do want to get seed starting mix because seed starting mix is specifically formulated to be light, and non-bulky. There's not going to be big chunks of stuff in there that's going to hold the seeds in place but allow water to drain out so we don't drown our plants. It has also been sterilized so you don't have any funguses or spores or weeds coming into this mix. It is a sterile mix to prevent any problems. So don't start seeds in non-seed starting mix or you will have problems. But the first thing we have to do is open this bag and get them into the pot here. So let me do that and I'll be right back. So you just saw me pour the soil into this bowl and then I added water in. Um, that's called pre-moistening our soil. You want to make sure that you get your seed starting soil wet before you put it in your trays. Otherwise, you're never gonna get it all moistened up and the whole bulk of soil really does need to be moistened up. Um, so what you're looking for here is not dirt soup. You're looking for the soil to be able to clump together but when you squeeze it, it doesn't ooze water out, but it holds together into a nice form. So we've got that consistency here. And so now I've just got to get this into my seed trays. So here we go. So once we have soil in there, we just want to come through and give a light tamp. We are not looking to compact the soil down. You just want to give it a light tamp just to settle that soil without causing compaction and getting a, a, a mess in there. And then that'll also show you where you need to fill up a little bit more. So I can see a few of these need a little bit more, just a tad. And then we're going to be ready to plant our seeds. Okay, cut. 
All right, so now I've got that all filled and ready to go. So I'm ready to start planting seeds. And so now you're just gonna plant seeds like you would in any other system. There's no change there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my um, he do. I think I'm doing the sound of that correctly. Um, the tiny bok choy. And these this did come from Baker Creek or rareseeds.com. And I'm gonna do three rows of the he do tiny and three rows of the purple lady. So now I've got my seeds here. put some in the back of my hand um, and the back of the bag will tell you um, I need to go about a fourth of an inch deep with these seeds and so you can see these seeds are pretty tiny but I have seen smaller so I'm gonna try to get uh, about two to three seeds in each cell so I'm just gonna make a little hole just itty bitty tiny hole Just give a little cup there in the soil, a place for the seeds to rest. All right, and here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oop, there got four in that one. That's okay. All right, so you get the point there. So I'm going to go ahead and put seeds in the rest of this tray, and we'll be right back. So I've went through here now and I've got all my bok choy seeds planted um, and here and if you'll zoom in to a cell you can actually see the seeds on that one because they're little light brown seeds and the little wells all right um, and so now all I've got to do is kind of just very lightly cover these up now remember we're not looking to bury these more than a fourth of an inch down so we're just lightly covering those seeds. We're just gently moving that soil around to kind of bury those down into the little wells we created with our finger. Really light, not too heavy. All right, and the next step is to actually water these in. So to water these in, we use a spray bottle and we're going to give these a good water down on each cell and that's going to settle the soil and the seed and give that seed a little bit extra moisture to get going all right and so now we can put our humidity dome on our kit. And we can set it in its tray. Now, there is no need today at this point to fill my water reservoir with water because obviously my seeds have not sprouted, they have not put out any roots, and it would just be sitting down there doing nothing. So for the first few days, while I wait on germination to occur, um, I'm just gonna be watering with my spray bottle. I mean, I'll keep a check on this um, every day, a couple times a day, um, just to make sure that we don't dry out. Um, and I won't be watering a couple times a day, but you wanna peek at them a couple times a day just to make sure things are, are looking correct. Now, another thing that you can do, which I don't have here today, I just ran out, is you can purchase vermiculite. Um, and again, you can get that at hardware stores, garden centers, um, and it's just, you just sprinkle that across the top of your seeds of the soil. And what vermiculite does is it acts as a mulch um, and it will prevent some of that uh, mold um, or damping off or any of those things that happen to seedlings. It can help prevent those things from occurring. So if you have vermiculite, feel free to lightly sprinkle that across the top of your seedlings. But for today, this tray is done. So now I just have to get my other tray set up, get my peas planted, and then we'll put everything on the heat mat. So we will be back in just a second for you um, when everything's ready to go under the grow lights. All right, so I have all my, both of my seed trays planted up. 
And here I have the bok choys, and here I have the peas. Um, all of these things are cool season crops, so they don't necessarily need a heat mat to get germinated. Um, so I just have them set here for right now. I have the bok choy setting on a heat mat, and then the peas are just sitting right here. Um, but once they sprout up, they will both need light. So I will, I will rearrange, and most likely I will do this right here, which I'll just go ahead and do for you right now. So that both seed trays are getting light from my grow light here. Um, and I do have another light that I will hook up um, so that the full amount of trays are covered with light. But that's pretty much it today. Um, so if you are a beginning gardener, maybe you've never grown seeds before, um, I hope you have found this somewhat useful. Um, if you are an experienced gardener and you've grown seeds for years, um, but maybe you've never tried the Gardener's Supply Seed Starting Kit, um, I recommend it um, so far. I mean, obviously this is just my first time with it, um, but just the sturdiness of the materials um, they're not flimsy. You can tell they're good quality. Um, and I just, from other reviews that I've seen, in just a couple of days, when I start to fill up these water reservoirs and let these things take care of themselves, I'm going to be so excited that I did this and made this investment to get these two trays. So if you haven't used them, look at Gardener Supplies website and see um, if they have any left and pick some up. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy them. But that's all I have for today. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer anything that you leave down there. But until next time, guys, from my garden to yours, I wish you all the best and happy gardening.